I don't feel like Ken came to your defense enough when you were called a liar on Saturday. Yeah, Bruce. I mean, he was high-fiving him after. <laughs> Ken, Ken and Sam went and got lunch. And uh, I, I, you know what's wild is that that really struck a nerve. I mean, the, yesterday was three days later, and it was still everywhere because people – I believe Sam Kennedy intended that comment for the media. I don't Not, think he was saying he wasn't fans. saying he wasn't saying it to you. I don't think. Oh no, he was to me, but to right. fans as well. And yeah. it's fine, you know. I'm a big boy, um, but I, I believe that the issue here is simple. Don't tell us what you are. Do it. And the anger and vitriol that Sam and Tom felt should be channeled at themselves to change the product and improve it. It's not a messaging error. It's that the team sucks, and you're telling us it doesn't. Yeah. And you're getting, like, would anybody Wait. dispute my point that since 2004, the ownership of this team feels like running the organization is a chore, that it's not this passion project that it once was? I think I mean I think it's hard to say that not being there and understanding no. where I don't think from Sam's perspective I, I think from John Henry's perspective is that your well the people you know, that run the organization I, I, are I, no I, longer as financially or as emotionally invested as they once were that is factual it was when they bought the Penguins and I, I Sam Kennedy I take out of that because I do think Sam Kennedy has all the passion in the world for the Red Sox I don't think that that's changed but when it comes to John Henry obviously his his concern is now spread over different teams. And I think that's why so many Red Sox fans and media members, myself included, had an issue with him buying another team in the U.S. Now, I understand he had Liverpool before, but I just hold those in such different buckets. When did he buy the team, though? 2021. I see. I think it was when he moved on from Mookie Betts. I think that's when the financial philosophy changed, shifted. And I think, yeah, I can understand you want them to be honest with you, but that was when it's shifted and there's like, well, why'd you move on for Mookie? And then you didn't really want to pay Xander. And, you know, we can, you know, maybe that well, was the I right think, thing to do. I think fans just want you to be honest. And I think it, you you make a big mistake if you're Tom Warner mm -hmm. and you announce that you're going to go full throttle and then, you know, at the – the, the the winter weekend, you're revealing that your payroll is actually going to be less this season than it was last season. That's not, I think, from the fan perspective, that's not, in their mind, going full throttle. And I would that, just ask this. I mean, you can use the word liar. I know people don't like it, so I won't. But what would you use to describe someone who said these things? I can't envision the Red Sox without Xander Bogarts on the team. Alex Cora and Heim Bloom have the best relationship of any front office executive and manager in my time with the Red Sox. What would you say about those two statements? Um, that that was they them. Were, they were incorrect. Yes, <laughs> right. Were, yes. So why are you mad at me for just pointing out those those inaccuracies? And and why don't you have that that anger directed towards improving the product so fans are happy? instead of getting mad at the media for being honest about your words. Well, I say I think with those things it's like the world of sports you have to be able to you have to be able to sift through the uh politic the the politics politic talk, right? You know, hey, Tom Brady, we want him to retire Patriot. Bill Belichick, we love him. You know, and you, Kyrie Irving, I want to have my jersey up in the rafters. Mm. You know, we love Xander Bogots, right? So I think that's like them talking in the moment, but when it really comes down to it, it's like the political talk that we now know in sports that do you you can't believe anything a owner or GM says about a certain player. That I, I look at the money trail. But you can't, after finishing in last place last yep. season, and not and spending less, uh -huh. and not addressing, uh, uh, really in in any meaningful way your number one need, mm -hmm. which is starting pitching. Yep, you can't expect unless there are ten extraordinary things that collide and happen. You know, uh, baby Pedro is turns out to be extraordinary. Mm -hmm. 
you know, Whitlock is, uh, you know, uh, in incredible sh- shape and he's suddenly going to deliver for you. I like they do Trevor Story Hall- is going to be, you uh, know, Trevor who Story we thought he was gonna going to be. going to return and be who, you know, right. all of those things have to happen. Mm-hmm. And maybe they will, but your expectation, if you're those guys, can't be that it's going to be, you're going to spend less after mm-hmm. finishing last. And have a different result. Well, if not, I had more time with Sam Kennedy, I would have followed up with after he was admonishing me with, so you finish in last place consecutive seasons and you decrease payroll while increasing ticket prices? In what way is that not disengaged? How In 2003, when Aaron Boone's home run landed in the, st- in the seats at Yankee Stadium, the Yankees beat the Red Sox. Grady Little game, we all remember it. That night... Larry Lucchino penned a letter to season ticket holders that he actually followed up with where he said, this is not acceptable. We will not rest until we bring a championship here. That began the most insane offseason I have ever experienced. A pursuit of Alex Rodriguez ended up with bringing in Kurt Schilling, trading for Keith Folk, and obviously the Nomar trade during the year. That ownership group bears zero resemblance to what currently operates the Boston Red Sox. Don't you expect that after what he said on this show yesterday, that's what it's going to be like for the New England Patriots? Like, didn't Gerard Mayo set your expectation? Yes. That as soon as free agency starts, they're going to be, they're going to be, you're going to have a big splash announcement after big splash announcement. Because that's, that's how we set the that's, table. That, that's how we – but so, you see, it oh. looks like the Red Sox have changed that. And mm-hmm. I give them credit for being honest. We're going, we're not spending any money. No. I would ask the question – But that's not – they said they were going full throttle, and then they're actually right. going half throttle. But I would ask the question, why? Ch- what's the change in philosophy when it comes to not want to spend any money? Um, what's the change in philosophy? Yeah, like – That people wh- still show up at Fenway Park, and it doesn't they, – they still make money? I mean, I, I – that, well, that's what I would ask. That I would ask only. Well, philosophy we can, we is can, that they are no longer engaged at spending at the top of the market to the point where why? John Henry has joined a group right. economic reform in baseball. So why, what, why is that? What made you go in that direction? You used to be big time spenders. What made you go in the direction of saying we don't no longer? Well, I'm assuming that you will have that opportunity mm-hmm. when it comes to opening day, or actually when it comes to spring training, right? And we are in Fort Myers talking with Sam Kennedy on this show. That'd be the question I'd ask. Just about a month. 